Hi guys, I'm trying this new thing where I'm trying to be more of myself. I struggle with my identity. I tweeted this out not too long ago and <laughs> just want to remind you guys that I'm 26 years old. I am no longer this little girl. I'm a grown ass woman. The time I started my channel, I've always done girl hacks, but we are women here today. So I was like, yes, let's do some women hacks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below your suggestions on what has just made your life easier as a woman. Cause being a woman is a full-time job. Am I right? Also, I have a new worksheet for you guys. It's a checklist for how to be productive and happy and it's completely free and it's linked down below. How many of you don't let your cookie breathe? Not me. I have actually not been sleeping with any kind of constricting clothes since I was maybe like 10 years old. And now there is actually a lot of fact to this of airing out your vagina. Dampness and discharge as a woman is very normal, but if you are constricting it into tight clothing, you are going to be affecting your pH level. It's only gonna allow more infections, bacteria, and all that stuff to accumulate in there. So literally just go commando at night. It is so much more comfortable. It is freeing. Literally just wear something airy so that you can breathe. How to take good pictures and look skinny. First and foremost, you wanna get comfortable with the camera. I'm not the biggest fan of having someone else photograph me. I just get kinda of shy. So I purchased this little gadget. It is the best thing. And pretty much you set her up and you have a little Bluetooth button and you can be taking pictures and just practicing with yourself, getting that confidence that you need in front of a camera. I find that the best pictures that I have ever gotten have not been with others, but with myself. I'm just more lenient on camera. I'm more relaxed. I'm doing different things. I really recommend this. It is incredible. As far as how to look thinner, ain't no shame to the game. One of the most awkward things is what do you do with your body when you stand on camera? You are just like, I feel this pressure, okay? I've been there, done that. So the worst thing you could do is just stand there. Also this, I'm done with this. What I recommend you to do is to do this fake walk. It's almost like very nonchalant. You're simply just walking forward. Oh then you're going back. You're walking forward, then you're going back. A lot of models tend to do this. Not only are you kind of extending your legs as if you're like on your tippy toes, which is another tip, you are lengthening your figure. You're making yourself look longer, which is how you look skinnier, okay? <laughs> Not only do you look longer, but you also look less boxy and it looks more casual, you know? I like those casual pictures. I'm not a model, but this is just what I've learned. For me, one of my biggest problem areas is my arms a little bit thicker. I've learned how to make my arms look a little bit thinner in pictures, as opposed to just kind of being to the side with my arm pressed up against my body. You want to kind of accentuate it out, give it some room, let it breathe. You look very elegant. I found the solution to no more ingrown hairs for me, and that is wearing looser jeans. The more you constrict yourself in to jeans. Literally, it's like the hair cannot go out because you're so constricted that it just has to go back in. I used to find myself having extremely ingrown hairs around like my butt area and my thighs, and it was because that was the most tightest part of my jeans. I no longer wear super fitted jeans. I'm still accentuating the booty with other stuff, but I've just, for me, it's miraculous. Like, I don't want any ingrown hair. So if you're dealing with that, that might be why. If you're dealing with that, make sure that you give yourself at least some time between tight jeans. So once in a while you're wearing loose fitted, then once in a while you're wearing tight, but not all the time. Because then it will be ingrown hair infestation. I have always had very brittle nails and also my nails are very like large, I would say. If you want your nails to look longer and you don't have the jeans, my nails break a lot, but I have found, it's all about this shape, oval it up. What I personally find when I shape my nails square-like is that all of the edges are always breaking, okay? But with oval nails, you don't got the edges. So your nails just continue to grow longer. It almost gives like this illusion that your nails look really pretty and long and I love it. It's what's helped me out so much and my nails aren't even that long right now, but they don't look super short. And the reason being is because they're all ovally as opposed to square like. Shave your face if you want. It's a choice. Body hair, specifically facial hair. I am a hairy girl and I shave my face. Yes, I do. I used to be scared of shaving my face. I was afraid I was gonna turn out like a gorilla, but contrary to popular belief, there's actually a method called dermaplaning. This helps your skincare look better. It penetrates more into the skin. Your skin just looks glow. It's almost like you're removing a layer and makeup looks flawless. Your skin looks more glowy. You're removing dead skin from your top layer. I also personally feel like it's helped my acne out. I will leave a full video of my tutorial on how you dermaplan down below in case you are interested. And hey, my hair has not grown back like a gorilla, so I'm doing a-okay. So as a woman, knowing your stable go-to look, that really just accentuates your features, makes you look fresh, youthful, beautiful. It's gonna save you so much time and just make your life a lot easier. I wanna show you my simple and easy go-to makeup look. You still haven't established your look. It's very simple. Focus on these three things. You're gonna focus on the skin. Very, very important. You're gonna focus on the brows, framing the face. And number three, your eyes. There's many different ways to make your eyes look more alert. Even give yourself a little instant facelift. I'll show you how. Super simple. You feel like your face is just kind of falling. 
age, gravity, whatever. So you just grab two sections of hair from your crown, pull it back, tighten up your face. It kind of looks like a high and tight ponytail, but less obvious. And bam, you got yourself an instant facelift. It is that easy. Another way to make your eyes look more lifted is to kind of create this little lift right here for your eyeshadow. So instead of going all the way just back and forth, kind of create an angle. You see what this is right here? That makes your eyes look as if you're a little bit more lifted. I'm always looking for skincare products that will make my skin just look more bright, healthy, hydrated. It's very important for me. I'm usually very yellowy. I found my color. Now that I'm losing collagen, like I'm getting older. So I am appreciative of concealers that do not crease my eyes and make me look a little bit older. As for the brows, instead of using any kind of brow gel, use a bar of soap to shape and set them into place. It's been one of my go-to hacks since forever. It's almost like you're getting your eyebrows laminated, which I've also done another video on. Just turn out gorgeous. They frame your face so beautiful. Get to know your garden, your cookie. You know what I'm saying? Wait, I'm really curious. Text me what you call your down there. I don't call it anything other than a vagina. I don't know if YouTube's gonna demonetize me, so that's why I just got it. I just call it the V, Lady V. So what I mean by this is in the series Girl Talk, I talk a lot about taboo topics, if you will. It is so important to get to know your body. Not only like physically, like literally seeing what it looks like, but I would say more so getting to know your mood, especially when your period comes. For me, this is something that has changed my life. I know I PMS like crazy before my period starts and the day of my period, so what do I do? I do not plan any meetings around that time. I literally schedule it out of my calendar. My life coach taught me this and it has been a game changer because when you're PMSing, you do not control yourself. It is your uterus is controlling your mind, your emotions. You're just more sensitive. You know how it is, girl. I need those two days to just not be in conflict with anyone. If you struggle with PMS, let me know down below, like what are some of your symptoms? What do you experience? How to make your cookie smell good. Now, everybody has a scent that is totally normal. Matter of fact, as far as like maintenance down there, my biggest tip is to not use any kind of harsh chemicals or even soaps with too much fragrance. It could be super irritating. I don't think you should be putting anything other than like water or something that is pH approved, such as this right here by Summer's Eve. I absolutely love their wipes and I just love their products as well. Well, they're very light. They don't change your pH level down there, which means you're not gonna be having any kind of infection or anything like that. I find these to be the most useful when prior sexy time, after a period, after you take a big deuce, anything like that. These are awesome. They're your best friend. I will link them down below. Another thing I've realized is the difference between self-maintenance and self-care. Let me explain. Self-maintenance is anything like, I gotta shower, do my brows if I wanna, maybe I gotta shave, gotta brush my teeth. I gotta keep up with myself. That's self-maintenance. Self-care are the things that just make you feel cared for. A nice bath, a nice afternoon to just stroll around, go to the park. Well, Cause sometimes I would sit down and I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do today? Oh, I have to do my eyebrows, that's self-care. I have to shave, that's self-care. I have to do this, blah, blah, blah. But by the end of it, I was just tired and I was just maintaining you know, the look or whatever it was that I wanted as opposed to like my soul. So I think that's very important, knowing what the distinguishing factors of that are and also just incorporating more self-care into your routine, whatever that might be for you. Comment below what your favorite thing. For me, it's bubble baths. I love them so much. They're the best. Grown women set boundaries. This has been one of the most life-changing lessons that I've had to learn throughout my tweens, throughout my young adulthood, and now into my later 20s. Grown women know when it's time to work, when it's time to play. They value their time. Now, for me personally, setting boundaries was always such a big thing. I've always been such a people pleaser. I always want to be nice to others. I want people to see me as being very nice. And that was always kind of like my biggest weakness, if you will, because there was never a time where I knew how to say no to things. And then I would over schedule myself, really deplete my life and I became resentful. I became bitter towards other people because it was cutting into the time that I never made for myself. So one thing that I've started doing is I soul plan. This has been life changing and pretty much what it is, is I sit with myself almost every single week to kind of plan out my to do's for my work. But I also sit with myself to soul plan. What are the things that are gonna drive my soul on fire for the week? I legit just sit down and I plan. I want a bath on Monday afternoon. I want a nice stroll in the park on Tuesday and I want to meditate and I want to journal or I want to do all of these things. And it's just a time where you are setting in just for yourself. I did take some notes about boundaries because I'm still learning. And honestly, I almost feel like this in itself needs an entire video. So this is what I wrote down. I've often been the kind of person that I often don't say no, but I had to learn someone's asking something of you, specifically manipulators or people that kind of want a quick answer. Practicing saying no has been a big thing. Now for me, I would always struggle because I felt like I had to 
explain myself, right? So I'd always be like, sorry, I can't, and I can't do this because I'm doing this. I'm also dealing with this. I was like depleting myself and just explaining why. I but a loving and respectful person will just be like, that's totally fine. No worries. Don't even worry about it. It's almost like reprogramming yourself to just say no without having to explain it to others. Because when you're explaining it to others, what you're doing there is you are asking for that validation. You're making sure that they understand why you truly can't do something. Even if you don't really want to, that's when things can get a little bit tricky. So for me, what I've been practicing is literally like three phrases that I literally write down on my phone. Sorry, I can't. Bam. I leave it at that. Then another phrase. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm really busy right now. I'm not going to explain myself. That's just the way it is. Or, or if you have someone that's really pushing you into making an answer, it's like, I really need a moment to think about it. But if you can't wait, I totally understand if you need to make other arrangements. For me, the questions I ask myself when anyone's kind of like asking all these requests of me is number one, is this good for me? And number two, do I actually want to do it? If you don't, you're going to create this bitter and resentment towards that person. I think I should do a whole video on this. Let me know down below if you'd be interested in a video all about boundaries because it has changed my life. Soul planning has allowed me to create those boundaries. And again, soul planning is just me sitting down with myself asking what do I want to do for the week and scheduling it in. By the way, if you enjoy these types of videos, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. That just kind of shows me how you feel about certain content. Also, let me know down below in the comments, what are your womanly hacks? Do not hold back. If you'd like to reach me after hours, feel free to text me at this number right over here. I'm constantly connecting with you guys, loving you guys, just getting to know you. It's been so rewarding for me. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe, click this button. If you're feeling anxious, stressed, or just worried about life, feel free to download my worksheets. They're all linked down below. If you missed me before then, you can always check out my vlog channel where me, my husband, and Jupiterito vlog about our lives. I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Check out my last two videos by clicking here or right here. I'll see you there. Have you clicked it? Have you clicked it? Yes, no? Okay.